again. I will try to turn on and on, on and off again. Yeah, um, it, it's still off. <laughs> well, luckily I've turned it on. And by it, I mean the stream. Welcome to the stream! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no warning, never warning. Um, never warning. Never warning. Hi! And welcome to the... the to the... To the... <laughs> to the... <laughs> to the... <laughs> Good start of the stream. Something along this those lines. Best to stream in a while. <laughs> uh, yee, we're back doing via stuff. We are so here doing is, it. Here apparently. is a, the cat made of a tower. Here is a cat that's a little, possibly a little warm. Uh, just a little. a little. Just a little bit. Maybe you're lacking a little bit of energy. Otherwise, fine. A lot of stuff just fell off my desk. I hope that was <laughs> Oh no. I hope nobody heard that. <laughs> no, yeah. no. I mean, we, we heard your despair. <laughs> oh no. And here is Marshmallow Cat. A stupid Snoopy Cat. Cause, um, because of reasons, I googled Snoopy Cat and, uh, this stupid fell up here popped up, and I love it. Snoopy cat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you found it. <laughs> well, apparently there is a cat called Snoopy, and they are. I, I've I have seen cats look that look like that. I don't know if it's specifically Snoopy, but. Eat up you. <laughs> Look at that. It is such a big guy. <laughs> oh, it's so stupid. <laughs> you know what's weird? I've, I've been <clears throat> doing very quick thumbnail sketches for my October thing. Um, and for some reason I chose to Add a cat to all of them, except the ones yeah. whose the, char the characters are themselves cats, because there's more than one of those. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> interestingly, the one I found the most difficult is actually d d bloody Pokemon. <laughs> I thought, oh, I'll just I'll just draw like a, a Pokemon that's a cat. That makes sense. I can't bloody draw the thing. <laughs> there's there are different cats or uh, whatever. <laughs> There are a lot of cats I could choose from. I was like, I, I, this one fits. This one fits the character. <laughs> Can't draw the bloody thing, honestly. Hi, Ragnar. Hello. Hi. All these Snoopy cats look like they feel immense despair. <laughs> oh, nothing at all. <laughs> Just... <clears throat> if you're named after, so sad. <laughs> if you're a cat that's named after a dog, you're gonna have a bit of existential panic. <laughs> I feel. They all look like they're 20 years into depression. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, <goodness>. Specifically 20. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah. He, he knows this. <laughs> Veer. We are veering. Of course. Um. Sure. <laughs> so I he believe... Knows. Always being, of course. Yes. Hey, of course. I was trying to find a joke there. Damn <laughs> it. Um, I believe, yeah, the prompt from last week was locations. Um, I've already made my location. There's a big pair of buttocks in the ceiling. Um, <laughs> oh, right. I forgot that. <laughs> oh, I forgot about that. <laughs> it's a very serious game made by very serious people. Yeah, and we yeah. don't need a player at all. That's also a lie. I, I, I don't know who those serious people are, but certainly none of them are in the call right now. <laughs> no. <laughs> I have no hmm. clue what I did last time. Uh, I know I had an idea for a location, I think. You did. But, you uh, drew an, an evocative picture of a hole. 
I'll, ad I'll admit it took a, a good couple of seconds after I said that to realize what I just said. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 draw. <laughs> you draw an evocative picture of a hole. <laughs> this is not this is not false. <laughs> I drew a doll and a person um, that perhaps emotional um, or. Um, uh, yeah, the floating That's door. Fuck it. <laughs> no. <laughs> that, if I'm not very much mistaken, is an evocative picture of a hole. <laughs> perfectly reasonable description. Yeah, but you don't have to say it like that. <laughs> it's I amazing. mean, I, I thought. I it was... 100% on purpose. I'm so amazed it wasn't. No, no. <laughs> Look. I mean, I'm allowed to be oblivious to whatever's coming out of my mouth. It <laughs> didn't help that you said it right after you true said the after you said that you drew a pair of buttocks. That didn't that it, help the context true. of the conversation. The whole, yeah. I should iterate the hole does not lead to the buttocks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, what else? What else? Let, let me let me look through the gallery. For we have a gallery. In fact, let's put it on the stream. Because it, here's the gallery. Yeah. Also, music courtesy of Adrian von Ziegler. Uh, what's new? What's new? Whoa, whoa, whoa. There were hair friends. Should we drew some hair friends? Oh, right. I drew some hair friends. Uh, there's Cause... the buttocks. Everything I've drawn is nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't fit anywhere, but I'm just drawn. <laughs> I remember I drew, you drew some friends, a frog friend as well. And there was a, a frog. <laughs> there was a frog. There was a knight. Um, there was a harpoon. I don't know if that was last week or the week before. Oh, that was the week, the, the, the week before, I think. That was for mm. None, none of this is sorted by date. <laughs> so. Oh yeah, there was hashtag relatable. I forgot about that. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Hashtag I still relatable. stand by that. <laughs> it's a very much migraine mood. I found out. Mm. Oh. Yesterday I was like, yeah, that's what I feel. <laughs> oh no. I told you. I told you. <laughs> um, I mean, oh, for me, it was people. less behind my eye but it was it did feel like something was trying to burst out of my left eyebrow so i think it still hurts. <laughs> so, <laughs> i like the specificity I, of eyebrow i, I will yeah. point out chris part of the reason why you're looking at christy's art and going oh it's just a giant hole um is because if i remember correctly that's actually the shadow because yeah. on another layer there was a floating door Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. I thought it was. I thought it was a nice picture of a hole, like the or like the puddle of the blood or whatever. Well, I, I better remain yeah, that in the gallery then, wouldn't I? Like <laughs> the yeah, the the bookcase door thing, which was oh, on another part layer of it. because uh... Christy knows how to use layers. Uh... <laughs> well, finally, an echo. Well, I will. I will fix that then. And there's also a demon cat. That was drawn. But we also had the, a, a ladder that was much too long. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so that's a quick summary of last time. There was no evocative picture of a hole. It was an evocative picture of a shadow. <laughs> I mean, what is a shadow but a hole where the light didn't hit? <laughs> a, a hole in where the light is. <laughs> What is a shadow but light's hole? I, Who knows? I don't like the phrasing of that. I gotta be very <laughs> real with you. <laughs> Turns out, linguistically, you can have a lot of fun with hole. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just gotta use it in the right way. Hi, miss! That's, is that really the <laughs> way I you want to phrase this? <laughs> And none of this has anything to do with the buttocks that I started off with, so it's like <laughs> completely veered off. Again, veer. Um, 
Now you don't miss, you right? My own mod has banned me from this channel. <clears throat> As she has the right to. Indeed, yes. <laughs> this is an inalienable right. Um, I like, hmm. <laughs> that angry or just disappointed. Why? How long have you known me? <laughs> disappointment is my middle name. Building over those years. The last major creative thing I made before anyone started actually paying attention to anything I make um, was called Disappointment. Um, and it was, surprisingly, very disappointing. <laughs> Evocative, so, even? Evocatively? No, it was just sort of like... Mm. <laughs> many, many, many years. How many years? I don't know. I'd like to think. Don't think about it. Don't think. Time is your enemy. Yes. Mm. I've been having another major time crisis. Not the game. Oh, well, <laughs> you beat me too. <laughs> <laughs> I only know that game because of the internet and yet I don't exactly know how I know but it's in my brain somewhere for some reason yeah there's a lot of things like that where it's like oh I know of this I don't know how I know of this it's just <laughs> absorbed into my brain because the brain is like a sponge it makes sense all making sense now. If only I could control what it absorbs lines. instead of just it <laughs> taking random information that is entirely useless <laughs> and just hanging on to it. Some would argue it. that's yeah, part but... of the fun. <laughs> <laughs> thing is, if we couldn't cling on to useless information, then neither of us would have gotten degrees in math. So... <laughs> Oh, that's a burn I can't be part of, but I can't have it. <laughs> True, but you see, the difference is, Chris, you focused on algebra and I went into differential equations and statistics. Okay, yeah, you're more useful than me. Than me. <laughs> that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> it's so harsh, though. It's true. <laughs> you know, I did algebra because it was I liked it. Didn't do it because it was in any use. I'm still amazed I got paid. <laughs> Still plenty of people who go around and do fun things with that. And other various no one knows how this might be useful things, because why not? Look, someday some statistician or chemist or phys phys physical physic phys physicist, that's the word. <laughs> Um, I got physician <laughs> stuck in my head. I want, to call, I want to call him a physician, and that's not right. <laughs> Physicist. Anyway, some, somebody with a purpose will come along and take the maths and actually do something with it. Until then. <laughs> Until then, have fun! Buddy turned into a tower. I get this is how bad I am at drawing cats. You think as a rat? <laughs> this is why I'm doing a month of drawing cats. How you doing, Dark? You right? I feel like as a moderator, you should know that Miss has banned me. But it was a cat, but it could equally be a rat. Hmm, it's also having an existential crisis. Okay, I feel like the scale of this is probably off. So how how are we all? How was everybody's weekend? Was it grand? Apart from the, all the things that weren't grand. <laughs> I just realized it's a weekend, even though we do this every Sunday. So 
Oh yeah, time doesn't mean anything to me other than streams. So <laughs> the only reason I know it's the weekend because we have group game stream and then group draw stream. Yeah, I I lost track of time until like seven minutes past the hour, and it's like, oh wait. A <laughs> no, no, you misunderstand. Miss isn't banned. Miss banned me. <laughs> I know it's confusing. <laughs> yeah. But try to stick with us. <laughs> Something to do with holes, I can't remember specifically. Uh, you were talking too much about gratuitous holes. That, I think, is what happened. No, it was evocative. Evocative. <laughs> if it turns out, sure. wasn't, turns out it wasn't. Turns out I was wrong about a hole being evocative. <laughs> and being a hole. <laughs> yeah, and being a hole. <laughs> well, now we ascertained it was a light hole. So. <laughs> a light hole? I don't know how to drop boats. Who does? I don't blame you. <laughs> I wouldn't, yeah, I wouldn't dare ban this. Could you imagine? Could you imagine? This channel would go off the rails, even though. <laughs> Completely. Would be ruined. <laughs> would be mean the end of Chris's streaming career. <laughs> Completely would be a grand mistake. Yep. She knows where I live. That is true. <laughs> <laughs> miss, miss has sent me confectionery before. The next package may not be so pleasant. <laughs> Poisoned fudge. <laughs> Still fucked though. <laughs> Still, still fudge. <laughs> Ooh, poison flavor. I mean, there's a lot of stuff humans eat where it's like there's a fine line between poison and food, and we cup starch across it. <laughs> cinnamon. Yeah, cinnamon, Hopscot cinnamon is just bark. Um, oh. As far as I'm aware, caffeine is a molecule that's sort of a pest deterrent. So it's like, hey, I'm going to make myself poisonous so that you don't eat me when humans but ooh, meat! I can <laughs> see colors! Faster! <laughs> <laughs> It'll just be a very disappointed picture. Oh no. It'll just be a little, a small card with even smaller writing in it, which just says sigh. And that's like no. Miss's equivalent of like a, a horse head in the bed, you know. <laughs> uh, but yeah, this is like th there's no like, you know, the universe didn't invent things and categorize them neatly into these things will kill humans and these things will make humans better. It's just like it's, chemistry is complicated. <laughs> So some things will cause problems in large doses and just do slightly strange things in small doses. One might argue that's what a large... <laughs> that's what the definition of a large dose would be. I always like it when people say, oh, you shouldn't have too much blank. And it's like, yeah, that's, that's what too much means. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can have too much of just about anything. Up to and including water. Mm. Yeah, my and grandma oxygen. used to drink too much water because she had diabetes and um, was an old nurse, and uh, she was uh, had been conditioned to think she had to drink all all the water all the time with nothing else. So she was in vitamin and mineral and everything deficit all the time. That's making me worry. Too much water like, oh, will I... just uh, make all of those things drain right out of you. Yeah, it, um... 
It also messes with some um, things with electrolytes because basically the concentration isn't high enough. Right, that too. Fortunately, for most people, it's very hard to reach that point of overhydration. Usually we have the opposite. It's not enough I mean, us. I drink pretty much mm. constantly, so I might be at that point. <laughs> As long as you get a bit of sugar and um, other, what's it called, nutrients in what you drink. I don't know what if you only drink water and juice. Oh, uh, yeah, that's sort of various fruit juices and. Yeah, that helps. And such. You've compiled your doodles with the questionable title details, Doc. What? <laughs> B tails. All oh, right, okay, cool. Yeah, I guess it is a questionable title. I never thought about it, really. I love what pops up when you just Google the simplest things. Like Snoopy. You always get surprised. Yeah. Snoopy cat. That's a lot of faces, Chris. <clears throat> Yeah, I was trying to work out how to make gargoyles fun. Well, not gargoyles, but like stone sculpture animated things. I thought, what, what if lots of heads? Yeah, it's apparently later, a but... European Bee Award. Hm. Nice. European what, sorry? Bee Award. Bee? <laughs> yeah. Bees? Bees! 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 Like, what, what sort of award are they giving the bees? <laughs> best, best worker, um, most hexes filled, um, Beyonce. Queen's favorite. Fact! Where's the fact book? I hope it's about bees. Please be about bees. Please be about bees. <laughs> wow, this is the shortest fact I've read in this book. Uh, Neanderthals used glue. <laughs> That's the fact. Okay. <laughs> I expected you to elaborate more, but I guess nope. not. <laughs> Neanderthals used glue. <laughs> Demand a refund. No refunds, only research. Feel free to look up more details. I mean, that doesn't really surprise me, considering... Uh, ye old glue paste you could make from, like, bone marrow, essentially? Water? And rabbit's fat. Yeah. And stuff like that. <clears throat> some bun bone marrow, some fat, some water. Now you've got yourself an adhesive. Also, cement is really easy to make, all things considered. It's just hard to make in, uh, hard to make by hand in large enough quantities to make a full load out of it. Like, um, Roman cement? Yeah. <clears throat> the Romans had cement. Yeah. It's just that it was mostly used to hold stones, larger stones together in a row, as opposed to making a full cement paved room. <clears throat> Why is the chat over that side on this screen? What? Sorry, I just realized the uh, dog just planted some things on stream and I just realized that the chat is underneath the plant. 
and I don't know why. <laughs> hmm, weird. You, you can go You're over there. hiding in the forest. <laughs> Hide there. Stop trying to camouflage yourself, Doc. You cannot hide from my scrutiny. The only way you can evade my gaze is as people normally do, which is by me just not really paying attention. <laughs> Put you back now. Be there. <laughs> You'll be the most conspicuous. <laughs> Yeah, I'm also working on the assumption that this is an animated statue, and statues tricky to, you know, bend. So they just crack at the joints. Seems it's reasonable. It's a gold statue. Uh, probably stone. Might have some gold gilding. I mean, if it's probably made out of gold, it's word. going to sort of melt if someone touches it too much. And it turns out pure gold. Not sturdy. That's why they mix it with things. What was it I saw where it was like the stereotype with um biting a gold coin? It's not to check if it bends, but if it not bends. Oh yeah, yeah, because they used to essentially sort of make fake ones out of a more solid material. Or something like that. Yeah, so, so like if, it should if them. you have a pure gold chain um, and you leave it in your palm long enough, it won't like melt, melt, but you'll be able to like squish it. I mean, that's one yeah, way pure, to make pure, it. Custom. Yeah, pure gold is very, very malleable at very, well, relative to other metals, relatively low temperatures, which is why it's really useful in, like, artistry stuff. Uh, and mm. which is why, if it's being used for a practical thing, we cut it with something else so that the wires in, say, your airbag in the car don't just become a goopy pile of mess. Which is handy. Which is me. And yes, I did just say that there is probably gold in the airbag of the car. What did you just say, Christy? Did you say this is me? <laughs> did... The goopy pile of mess? That's what? You... No, you're not allowed. No. <laughs> you're not right. a goopy pile oh, of I mess. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> also, was, was this what was meant with B-tail? Uh, what was here? Someone mentioned B-tail. Oh, detail. Oh. B I mean, I, I say we leave the B with the tail. Yeah, it suits it. No, miss. You can't be a good pile of mess. Be a good pile of miss. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be here all week. Um... We have a command for that. <laughs> we do. Yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to move chat back. Oh my goodness, is this how you feel today, Chibi? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I mean... Hmm, yeah. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> which, 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 which one? The melting cat? The... The gender I'm, goals. I'm hoping or, closer or to the, the left. Crab, crab <laughs> neck. Yeah. On a scale of left to right, how's your day going? <laughs> oh, you guys can this? figure that out. <laughs> <laughs> or is it this? Oh, bees. Or this? <laughs> <laughs> and the most inconvenient house. <laughs> location, location, location. And they answered all three of those questions with rock. Yes. Find a rock. Build a house. 
But the rock's surrounded by ocean. Find the rock! Oh no, adding the eyes made it worse. <laughs> it's looking at me. <laughs> oh, mm, yeah, that's mm. bad. Well, we'll come back to that. <laughs> uh, in the meantime... <laughs> In the meantime, Ragdoll has the shipwreck, which we can explore in, in Abyss. It's Abyss. Ragdoll crashed yeah, into I my house. Yeah, I realized I should probably break this mast. This is fine tomato smile. This is a fine tomato smile. <laughs> well, it does at least have a second eye. That's... that's... It's fun watching the ship being disintegrated in slow motion. I think it looks stupid. I thought, wouldn't it be cool if they had like a helmet, like a kind of... That, I don't know what it's called, that Roman helmet, where they've got the big sort of plume at the top, the sort of... forward to back... room. <laughs> Like the this stereotypical Spartan costume? Uh, the Spartans have it? I don't know. I'm, I, the crest, that's a good word. Yes. The, the wrong um, Spartan costume. Um, <laughs> anyway, I imagine that, but I thought, well, this is a really old thing. Everything's decayed, so they wouldn't have the plume, but they would still have the bits where the plume went. Um, so I thought, oh, if I make a hat and then add, like, bits where things should be sticking out and be all decorative, that would be fun. And then I realised I basically just made a hat with a bunch of tubes on it. Um, and they just look silly, so I'm not going to do that. I'm thinking it's a perfect place to uh, clean your shoes. Or use it to clean someone else's shoes. Or stand on your head, clean the floor. Clean the ceiling. Spider plume. I don't want to look. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely, right? <laughs> Going back. Facts! Distract us with facts. Um, oh, also, the facts appear to be working, which is good, because I changed how the facts work, so now I'm keeping track of them, and we shouldn't get the same fact twice. Until we run out of facts. Um, Goldman Sachs, famous... Uh, at least here for the 2008 financial crash. Um, Goldman Sachs complained to Microsoft for auto-correcting their name to Goddamn Sachs. <laughs> Goddamn Sachs. <laughs> yes. Why would you complain about that? <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> That's very funny. <laughs> I was, Please, I was... more stupid facts while I'm sick. <laughs> <laughs> ah, there's a five minute cooldown. I've added it to the fact thing. <sighs> oh, hmm. Mm. There's a chance for some weird stuff going on here. I've just realized. Which drawing? Uh, well, I mean, if I, if I pan left, there's already weird stuff. Don't worry about it. <laughs> um. <laughs> What do you mean? Because it's I am fine. looking at both of your drawings. I don't see y'all's problem with this. I mean, I personally think the bee that Christy has drawn is very neat looking. <laughs> bee is cool. Thank Bee's you. got tail. Got color. It's a uh, new uh, <laughs> duck tails. Ooh. <laughs> bee tails. He's pretty. It's just. Five minutes of the... <laughs> that's, that's it. That's... Yep. They're doing a little dance though, so... They do love to dance. So I was sort of thinking, because I'm sort of, like I say, I'm cracking the, the statues at the joints where they move. And I thought if you've got like a kind of... A statue with a big old robe or a big old skirt or something like that, where there's no discernible legs. How does it walk? 
And I thought, what if you're breaking it? It can walk however it wants. <laughs> so how many weird breaks can I put in this that would make sense for some sort of strange locomotion? This turned into like a weird spider, well not spider, but like a crab. <laughs> spider crab. Spider crab. Hey, girl! <laughs> Excuse me while I ban Chibi. <laughs> <laughs> hey, why are you banning me? I'm fine. <laughs> I mean, some good uh, Nick Ruffles is very fashionable. Yeah, I didn't see what's wrong with this. It's all good. Oh my goodness, I see it now. I thought... I thought another part of the, part of the statue was a person. Who? If uh, I may red line, I thought this was the person, not this. Oh, you misunderstand. <laughs> oh, I misunderstand you, you, now. You were correct the first time. That's that's just another head. Oh. <laughs> I'm sticking with the theme okay. of many heads. <laughs> yes. It looks like they're like um, swooning this person, though. <laughs> I mean, kind of. The, the, isn't there um, Dark Souls and Elden Ring, I think, at this point, have like armors that have like a person in them, like embracing the person who's wearing the armor, as it were? So there's like a. Hang on, let me get a picture. That's what <laughs> I um, isn't it called the Armor of Favor or something? Oh, I mean, God, I've there's... seen plenty of armors that have got, like, just a face on the breastplate. For reasons. Um, I'll tell you what, me typing out the words <laughs> Armor of Favor, Google is already mad at me for the amount of use I used in that sentence. Um... Yeah, so there's this one. Which is like somebody sort of hugging you from behind. Uh, but then also in Elden Ring, there's one and I can't remember this. Uh, the Elden Ring has like. It, actually, isn't it. Tw twin armor, something like that? Where it's like one of your arms is the arm of the character in the armor, and it, it's a weird thing. Oh, it's a YouTube challenge. <laughs> yeah, kind of. Only the other person is an inanimate piece of armor. Um, or it's like cheating. those. <clears throat> it's like those costumes where it looks like you're riding around on an ostrich, but your legs are actually in the ostrich <laughs> legs. Yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> um, My favorite one of those, Luigi. Yeah, there you go. It's a neat, neat idea. So, like, yeah, your, the, your right arm is the arm of the, the, the statue coming out of your chest. <laughs> and you've got, like, a fake right arm embracing that. And it, yeah. Um, you're trying to think of locations for Limbo and you keep thinking of a large pool of blood. Ooh, blood lake, lovely. Um, that acts as some kind of portal or power-up area, maybe with the price of some kind. But you think there are already pools of blood or something in that location, so you don't know. We can have a we can have a blood lake. We don't have a blood lake. Um. <laughs> I thank Question. you for sending you. Sorry. Oh, I was just reading something, Mister Saint. You, you you first. I I just have a question about the lady cowering in fear in in this picture. I. I think that's a guy. Oh, sorry. And I think it's spoilers. Fear, yeah, I think it's spoilers. They're, they're, they're not having a good time. But I'm also not entirely sure who they are. So it's... Ah. Elden Ring's one of those games, you know? <laughs> I mean, I was sort of under the impression that a lot of the people in Elden Ring are not having a good time. 
like I, uh, small spoilers possibly I might also just be completely wrong so this, feel free to have fake spoilers uh, there's more spoilers for Elder Ring I guess I think that person is the person who this fake person in the armor is representing or something like that and they're not happy about there, it there's, there's a whole twin thing well, the, the entire game's got a whole twin thing going on but the sheep are having the best time in Elden Ring. I learned something the other day about about the sheep and the goats and that in Elden Ring. They spin, they, they roll, which is great. Um, but yeah, more spoilers for Elden Ring. There's a boss in Elden Ring, <clears throat> which is a big old deer. Um, got the best music in the game, hands down. And um, halfway through the fight, it just sort of burrows into the ground and then reappears what I originally thought was near some like ghost animals because there's a bunch of ghost animals in the air it's a spirit thing um, and yeah so it sort of burrows into the ground and then sort of reappears by the animal turns out it doesn't reappear by an animal it reappears in an animal um, and it takes the abilities of the animal that it appeared from so that if, if it like reappears in like a rabbit it hops around if it reappears in the sheep it does the rolly thing it reappears in, in a boar, it does the old boar charge. And it's like, who's noticing this? <laughs> One of the reasons it disappears is so that it can move across the other side of the arena. You can't see it. <laughs> oh, look, anyway, yeah. There is the, that that cool is why concept. it's a very cool concept, but also you kind of, it's not a very difficult boss, so you probably end up defeating it before it's like, it will have done that once probably. And it's only really on subsequent playthroughs you notice, oh, it's doing something different now. <laughs> I just thought it was, there were rare attacks. Turns out the attacks vary depending on what it took over, I guess. There's a lot of tiny details in these games that really feel like, you know, you've got, you've got to respect them, but at the same time go, how much time did you spend on this? <laughs> <laughs> I love these. It, it is a game filled with concepts where there wasn't enough time to, or enough game feasible to uh, even try and finish if every awesome concept was fleshed out as it deserved. Yeah, yeah, Elden Ring. Elden Ring definitely picks up from the mantle of Dark Souls 2 in having a lot of ideas and none of them really being properly delved into. But it does a hell of a lot of a better job mechanically and visually, so hooray. Congratulations, Tanimura. You've successfully shown the world that you can make good games. <laughs> it's not just Miyazaki. Hooray. <laughs> there are there are now two directors who can make good games. <laughs> Only two. Only two. At, at from software, I specify. <laughs> there, two. there are plenty in other companies. Don't worry. No, only two. No. Uh, it is now a fact. It. Put it in the fact thing. <laughs> uh, anyway, I've. Oh, oh hang on, I've, I've forgot to read the <laughs> miss thing. I'll, I'll do the miss. Miss said, uh, Chris thanked me once for sending him an Elden Ring meme with a giant hand coming out of the earth. You like to think that reminded him of a good happy time in the game. It did. Those giant hands coming out of the earth are lovely. Always happy to see those. Don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah? Okay. <laughs> it took me to a, a while to figure out your feelings about it. They're great. Love them. Should Easy to outrun. Roll with the monsters. I'm sorry. Oh, oh dare I pan left? <laughs> oh. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Something hmm. wrong. <laughs> oh, ah, well, there's, there's a new one. There's a new one coming up. I'm sorry. I've just seen the the, uh, the nice neck sewing that's been going yeah. on. <laughs> I mean, it's more stapling, but you know. I get it. Yeah. Well, what is stapling if not sewing with metal? Exactly. 
metal. No, sewing is metal. <laughs> Like the scrappy doo dogs in the game. Oh, yeah, I see yeah. that. I see that. <laughs> when it turns into a freak of nature. Uh, <clears throat> a cartoon Jonah. puppy that's been 3D uh, made and you give it human bodybuilder muscles is some. Um, not a great thing. Yeah, apparently most of the writers and creators of the various incarnations of Scooby-Doo uh, are not fond of Scrappy. <laughs> I wonder why. Scrappy always feels a little bit like when a sitcom's been going on too long and they're like, let's add a baby. Oh no. Scrappy is the metaphorical baby of Scooby Doo. <laughs> Only it has dialogue. <laughs> See, so the, the fun thing is. <laughs> which actually, <laughs> there is a sitcom that did that My Hero, which is about a superhero. They have a baby and it can speak. <laughs> I still anyway. don't get why you want to ban me, miss. <laughs> <laughs> Please do explain. <laughs> In detail. Explain in detail. We need to understand the purpose for the ban. I personally can see absolutely no reason that there should possibly be. Yeah, it's fine. Oh yeah, I keep... Um, I'm sorry, I... Uh, my brain is firing uh, slowly today, so I keep talking over people more than usual and then I lose the thought of what I was going to say and um, I've been wanting to say, Chibi, you need to make that cat a sticker, please. What? <laughs> Your liquid cat is very mood. I, I, I demand Chibi's sticker pack. Yeah. <laughs> Chibi's sticker pack. <laughs> Everybody makes stickers. stickers now, cool. with melting cat and the feeling of what a migraine is like. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, people who doesn't know us gets very confused about the chippy um, sticker pack not having any chippies. <laughs> yeah. I should have one chippy. The, the, this should be the sticker pack of the Im the impossible mood. Like there should be no, <laughs> no way of working out what the actual like connecting tissue of all of the individual stickers is. It's just... <laughs> these are the stickers. Deal with it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Connecting tissue. That makes me think of the vines from Stranger Things. That, that says a lot about Stranger Things. <laughs> I don't know anything about Stranger Things, so... It's, interesting. it's a lot more horrific than I remember, so I guess season three sucked. <laughs> <laughs> Stranger things Apparently Stranger, stranger Stranger things have happened I don't know <laughs> <laughs> Miss has opinions <laughs> Opinions about stranger things? Yes, apparently season yes. 2 sucked <laughs> Only season 2 what? Season 2 sucked apparently no. Well, no. second little bit. Dissenting but opinions. <laughs> the um, biggest feelings, that, you know, I'm, I'm the type of person that gets extremely attached to um, other worlds that I haven't myself created because I don't have the inner eye or imagination for it. Um, so I latch on to these things and really just go ham on it. <laughs> Um, but my general vibe of Stranger Things after having watched season four is I love it so much it hurts except, and this is maybe a bad opinion, but it annoys me that, uh, um, 
white celebrity child was a well <laughs> adult was written in to season three when they could have had literally anybody be that role. That annoys me. <laughs> season three gave us Robin. Ooh. But you got that in in season one of the nineteen sixties Batman show, so Batman's better. <laughs> What, what did it? The character in Stranger Things I'm talking about is named Robin. <laughs> mm. That's funny. I rambled. I'm sorry. No. I've been rewatching, watching it, and having a crisis for a couple of days about it almost being over. <laughs> you are not allowed to apologize for rambling during a stream explicitly designed for us to ramble in. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, apparently if anyone should apologize, it's me, but I don't know what for. <laughs> Actually, apparently you do have to apologize. Um, huh? oh, no, you don't bad have to opinion. apologize. M miss, miss disagree. Also, that, that was the other thing I was going to say. There's no such thing as a bad opinion. There might be an unpopular one, but there are no me. good or bad opinions. Well... An opinion is just the thing you think without any necessarily logical reason and uh, other people's things that they don't think for any logical reason are just as valid or unvalid as yours I mean if you don't entirely know what you're talking about like I don't know what I'm talking about uh, about how Hollywood works but I still have an opinion about it well and that's it why it's called an... a bad opinion <laughs> that's why it's called an opinion yeah you can, you, you can have slightly more informed opinions like Opinions with <laughs> opinions with facts that could arguably be put forward to somehow support that opinion, but ultimately it is still an opinion. It's not a yeah. it's not a theorem. <laughs> yeah, the problem comes when people are just like, "Oh, this is just my opinion," and it's like, "Okay, it's not really the problem." Isn't you having an opinion? The problem is you trying to force that quote unquote opinion on everyone else as fact. Yes. Or just being an unempathetic asshole. That's also usually a part of it. You're entitled to your opinion. Everybody else is entitled to theirs. And opinions basically don't mean anything outside of your brain. <laughs> Apart from... <laughs> Apparently, it's so good in Sandman. Sandman is so good, apart from 30 seconds in one episode. <laughs> Which can rot in I mean, hell. that's a good track record, I guess. Nice. <laughs> I tried to watch Sandman, but it made me so sad that everything and everyone had to be so dark and horrible. More like Sandman. Well, I mean, the fun thing is... It's sort of the point. So I don't know how much you know about the uh, history of the Sandman comic itself. No. So the original Sandman comic came out in the 80s-ish. Um, Gero, information. And, okay, so quick, quick note here. So, the United States used to have this thing called the Comics Code Authority. And the Comics Code Authority was basically these rules you had to follow uh, in what you were representing in your comics to get the Comics Code Authority stamp of approval. Uh, and basically, it was... It, it boils down to it was a self-censorship uh, mm. thing. Like, you didn't technically have to follow the Comics Code Authority, but if you didn't, you didn't get the official sticker thing. Um, not the official sticker thing. Yeah, not the official sticker thing. Um, Sandman was one of the last nails on the coffin for the death of the Comics Code Authority. Uh, and basically in that comic, Neil... Now, some of the stuff in it doesn't translate well because we've sort of moved on as a society from there. And it's like, yes, this is terrible. Um, but in the 80s... It was really, really profound, and it had these... Basically, there was a lot of different communities where it's like, Neil is trying to show you something here. 
So, like, the... It's it's one of the first uh, comics where we have a trans woman who is shown sympathetically. And if you pay attention to the narrative, the narrative does go with, like, yes... This this is who she is. Uh, literally, any every character who mistreats her and misgenders her in some way, uh, that's basically as a like, okay, this person is an asshole. Um, yes, she does end up dying at the end of it, but the last image we see of her, it's her, her soul is basically taking the form that she envisions in her mind. So you, you've got a lot of stuff like that where it's like. We're sort of forcing you to look at these things. It's it's using a lot of dark themes to sort of showcase humanity in a way, but not showcase humanity in a way it's like, oh, humanity is terrible. Um, it's just showcasing humanity as as humanity, like these humanity things that you sense. see as dark and terrible. It's like these are just people. I just can't deal with um, innocent creatures like uh, if if you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. I just couldn't deal with that. That's when I stopped. Yeah, everyone's gonna yeah. have their own. Ultimately, ultimately, you know, people are here for either entertainment or possibly elucidation or to see something new or whatever. But ultimately, if you're just not enjoying the process, then there's just not much point. If you're not getting oh, yeah. anything out of it and you're not liking it, stop. Yeah, there, there is nothing wrong with looking at something and going, I know what the point of this is, but it's not for me. Yeah. yeah, it's too harsh. Like, And I like horror and stuff, and I like um things that have a point and stuff. Um, like, um, Stranger Things Season 4 wasn't exactly pleasant at times, but it's just... Um, and like uh, things I characters I love have died and stuff in things that I love but um, it's uh, that specific nerve that uh, I personally uh, have that's very uh, raw and sensitive in the Sandman I wish I could watch it though because I wanted to watch it because of the actors um, when I found out Stephen Fry was it, I went, was like, yes, mm. need to watch. <laughs> but I might give it another shot when I'm in a bit of mental place now that you've explained it to me. Yeah, that, that's yeah, another it, thing. It's, timing it might is also, also an help. Factor. Now, I don't, I haven't watched the much of the series myself, but with the comics there were some chunks that were sort of standalone stories. So if there's an episode where there's something in it where it's like, this is not something that's going to jive well with my brain, you should be fine skipping an episode and just moving on with the rest of the thing. Oh, that's dope. If, if there's important plot elements that pop up, I'm sure someone will make gifs of it and post them on Tumblr as they go on about their blorbos. <laughs> <laughs> no. I mean that's that's largely how I interacted with um, Good Omens, stuff like that, <laughs> through Tumblr and random YouTube clips and stuff. I was amazed to find find out that they weren't necessarily the main characters. So Curly and Aziraphale. <laughs> Turns out there are other characters. There's like a story. There's a plot. Didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I. The, the fun thing is, yes, they are not the main characters. They are the point of view characters. Uh, but arguably, they are not the ones who get any of the plot moving. The plot is sort of happening around them as they are trying to control the plot, and it's not controllable. Like, even the catalyst event that leads to our hero being able to grow up into something heroic, they had nothing to do with that. That just happened outside of them. <laughs> Did they take all the credit, though? Not really. Although, oh. hilarious, the, the miniseries did add in scenes that has more stuff about them. So I guess that's why they some people something might about think, each oh, they're the main characters, because we've got additional scenes of their history. Uh, but no, the, the main hero of Good Omens isn't 
as the Raphael or Crowley, it's uh, the Antichrist. I, I guess that's the. Um, I keep getting recommended the same bloody things on Tumblr, um, and one of them is just people people complaining about how nobody knows the difference between protagonist and hero. So protagonist is just the the character through through whom the story is being told. They don't necessarily have to be good. They don't necessarily have to be the thing that moves the story forward. They're just the, the person through whom the story is being told. I have a hard time with stuff like that. I get too confused in my brain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, to be fair, most of the time they are at, they are either the same or at least in the same group. So, like, I've played a couple of um, RPG-type games where the main point of view character isn't necessarily the hero, but it's the um, sort of audience surrogate. Like, you're, you're viewing this as them, and they have no idea what's going on, and you have no idea what's going on, so you're sort of learning along with them. But they're not, like, the hero of the narrative. They're just kind of, like, off to the side, getting wrapped up in all of these shenanigans. But <clears throat> my my favorite is, are the instances in which the character you're seeing the story through um, has no idea what's going on, but also is the hero. <laughs> <laughs> They're the one who's there to save the day, but they've not got a clue. Yeah, that's fun. I'm looking at you, Final Fantasy X. <laughs> Every Final Fantasy? Uh, kind of. Well, 12, <laughs> I would argue, falls into the category of your point of view characters are not the heroes. They are not what the plot is revolving around. They're just sort of there. Um... But they are you, your main heroes, where like the plot is centered around them, are in your party, at least. So it's not like you're just <laughs> running around and then suddenly the plot happens. No, the the plot does join your party. It's just that your first two party members are very disconnected from everything that is going on. <laughs> it's I'm gonna be a sky pirate, and then you've got political intrigue. <laughs> yeah, I think. I seem to recall there being, I, I don't know if it was a Final Fantasy game, but I do seem to recall there being a game where if your characters hadn't done anything, the story would have sold itself. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to remember what that was now. <laughs> There's more to a good omens than just the Xerophel and Crowley. I, how dare you? That is blasphemy. <laughs> Yeah, and the funny thing is, like I said, it's not like they aren't trying to affect the plot. It's just that, for the most part, they're not very effective at, like, puppeteering and good. engineering what's going on. <laughs> they're not great at their jobs. <laughs> I mean, arguably, they're the best at their jobs. It's I mean, just that they don't know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> True. Also that. Because arguably, um, so within Good Omens lore, uh, you have God who's got the ineffable plan, and you have angels and demons who are supposedly agents of that plan. But it's very obvious, both in the book and even more so in the show, that the angels are doing what they think the plan is, but it's not like any mm -hmm. of them have gotten, like, orders they're just kind of like, hey, you need to go blow the horn and start the apocalypse. And it's like, okay, but who ordered this? And it's like, I don't know. It's just what we're supposed to do, right? And meanwhile in hell, it's like, hey, we're starting the apocalypse. And it's like, oh, okay, why? I don't know. It's just what we're supposed to do, right? <laughs> and then at the end of it, it all just doesn't happen because the Antichrist is like, hey, I actually like living on Earth. So, hey... Satan and or dad, fuck you. I have my own dad. I'm gonna go live with him. And arguably in this universe, if you've got God as this ineffable being who knows what's happening, uh, God knew that would happen. So God's plan was for the apocalypse to not get started at this point. <laughs> that, that, that would be like God's best get out of cut get out of jail free card 
Well, yes, because I didn't tell anybody the plan. What happened was precisely my plan, yes. <laughs> yeah, basically. I arrived precisely when I meant to. <clears throat> hey, I don't think God even really shows up in Good Omens. It's just Adam telling Satan to fuck off. <laughs> yeah, no, God doesn't show up. Seems reasonable. She's kind of the narrator, and that's basically it. Oh. Cool. Maybe FF7, yeah. the planet saved itself from the meteor in the end? Well, they only managed to do that because you released Holy, so... Yeah, she's the narrator. Yeah, and for then yeah. All, all of the stuff with Adam becoming the type of person who would tell Satan, hey, fuck off, I like living here, again, had nothing to do with the agents of heaven or the agents of hell. It had to do with one person mixing up babies. <laughs> now, granted, there was a plot from hell to go, hey, we're going to mix up the babies and put the Antichrist in this particular household so he can grow up to become a well-off human being and we can mold him to be the Antichrist. Um, but then the nurse put him in a different family, so he just grew up in, a, like, a middle-class family, and his biggest thing as a child was to have a neat-looking bike, which the neat-looking bike was the girl's bike because it's got a basket and neat tassels, <gasps> and also he wants a dog. A basket on a bike. On the dog, it can't be bad. Yes, I, I, I have seen the dog, but... <laughs> I want a dog, I want a puppy. But yeah, it's just like, hey! <clears throat> and then you've got Aziraphale and Crowley who are like, okay, well, we've decided actually maybe we should sort of maybe stop this apocalypse thing, but neither of us are going to admit it out loud. So, hey, you're from the upside, I'm from the downside. How about we involve ourselves in the Antichrist life to try and influence him our direction? Nudge, nudge. Uh, except uh, they just go to the family where they think the Antichrist is and they just end up being the nanny and groundskeeper for just a regular ass kid. <laughs> so, ten years wasted of the Antichrist just growing up in a normal ass family with a bike, wanting a bike with a basket and a dog. <laughs> Sounds like the 80s. Worth remembering. Terry Pratchett helped write this. <laughs> so there's some wonderful silliness to it. <clears throat> yep. Very quick shading on this so that I remember what's what and where joints are and stuff. And then we, we can spin explode. wheels. So it has been an hour. Yeah, I got, as I started lining these, I thought, I do not have time for this. <laughs> we have wheels to spin. So many. I could spend the next entire year. So like, scrap all other creative projects that we're gonna do with streams and stuff. Just, I'm, I'm just gonna do nice pictures of all the stuff we came up with in VR. Yeah, yeah you sure you want to do that? There are so many, so many things I want to draw on this. We've come up with so many cool ideas. <laughs> yeah, actually, there's some useful stuff for things. Still looking, still last year looking at what I've drawn this stream. Um, oh, hello. I like this friend. <laughs> They're having a good time. They, they got a little vestigial wings. They're eating some the pizza. That is actually a very interesting skull shape. It is. 
Hmm. Like, <laughs> the, like it, ignoring the uh, tomatoes. Oh, God. Here. Sorry, the juxtaposition. And it's also of a these very interesting pieces. skull shape, but for different reasons. <laughs> Sorry, Ragdoll. I just uh, kind of flabbergasted. The two genders. Uh. <laughs> Have you panned a little bit to uh, either the right or the left, Ragdoll? There's a. Uh, mm. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> There's some. Uh, mm. <laughs> this is. I love your unpredictability. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that thing just ate my dog. <laughs> well. <laughs> he is your dog now. <laughs> I mean, sure, as long as it doesn't tear up the sofa, we're, we're good. <laughs> It's going to tear up your sofa. Look at that. <laughs> Bloody thing. I mean, oh, yeah, it that looks was like it probably already has torn up your sofa. <laughs> it's, it ate it whole. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, that, that was the other thing I was going to say. So the idea behind these, these friends, what I've made, it's a slight distraction from whatever's happening, Pan left. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Let's all take a break from Pan Left uh, <laughs> and discuss the, these. I, I, I wanted to make the original idea for these was some sort of stone, like sports champions. They're supposed to be in the amphitheater or whatever, and I like the idea of them. Like their boss fight is kind of like involved in some sort of sporting thing. Um, but I also realised I'd have to work out what sports are. Um, so any any idea on ancient sports that we could toss in there that could be deadly? <laughs> Dis going. <laughs> disc going. <laughs> I thought you were going to go for discus. Disc throwing, but yes. Oh, disc throw. Okay, I thought you Okay, not disco. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Big I old mean, little ball. <laughs> that could also be a deadly sport. Disco. Night fever. <laughs> if you panic enough at the disco, I'm sure someone will get <laughs> Oh, the hands are meant to be on backwards. No, the hands are meant to have too many fingers. Yeah, I was about to say, it looks like you gave them, like, two sets of thumbs. Yeah, it hasn't worked out quite well, but... Generally speaking, I wanted I wanted things to just kind of not, not quite be right. <laughs> I mean, all things considered, as far as... Having, like, like creating a grasping mechanism, having something that has two thumb-ish appendages, one on either side of the palm, does sort of make sense. They had to assemble themselves from what bits of statues they could find. <laughs> you know, it's been a while since they've been animate. You barge in. They're like, finally, competition. Oh god, where are my fingers? <laughs> you know, you know when you wake up in the morning and you think, oh god, I've misplaced my fingers again. All the time. Uh, usually I have the thought of, oh god, I've misplaced my eyes. <laughs> there, these guys don't have eyes, so that's reasonable. <laughs> you see! See, there you go. It's perfectly understandable. Uh, oh, oh. Uh, mm -hmm. Speaking of eyes. Speaking of eyes, yeah. I'm I hoping this we is going a kind of... Panning laughs. <laughs>, <laughs> I, I, this, was, this was panning up. I'm allowed this. <laughs> it's fine. Don't worry about it. To be fair, this could turn into Majora's Mask. This could be fine. <laughs> I, I don't know if I'd it put probably Majora's won't. mask in the bin of fine, but sure. <laughs> Chippy, Chippy, get in the band box. This is putting <laughs> you in the band box. <laughs> no, you can't make me. <laughs> <laughs> Miss is in charge of the band box. <laughs> so, I don't adhere to the laws of your streams. You know. I was about to say, I hope we get monsters for the next prompt <laughs> to see what Chippy will draw. Frankly, that's not going to change what Chippy's going to draw. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why you think it would. <laughs> it's this. 
Um, anyway, let's spin some wheels. <laughs> hey. I'm actually pretty proud of myself. I managed to take something that didn't look like a ship and made it look like a ship. It looks like a ship. <clears throat> yeah. Look at that. It's got a wheel. It's got a broken mast. The sails all flapping around. Got windows on the front. Cannon holes on the side. The ship. I like that you say yeah to it looks like a ship and immediately say it has wheels. <laughs> you no, know, it has a wheel. The, the wheel yeah. at the front for steering. Steering wheel. Uh, speaking of wheels, 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 spin. <laughs> I have no more preamble to that. Just wheels. Wheel. It's a really good time. Um. <laughs> okay. Hmm. Well, we got what masters. <laughs> well, do we? Because the wheel says we have flora and fauna. <laughs> what? <laughs> The name that came up says enemies. Bug! I found a bug! <laughs> Complain to the developer. Um, I guess we get to make flora and fauna that are enemies. Yeah. <laughs> the hostile flora and fauna. Why not? I mean, done. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, these are linked? <laughs> oh, we'll get back to that for now. <laughs> For Don't now, worry the... about it. <laughs> that Miss Living Piece of Wild Darker. <laughs> um, meanwhile, uh, Kiro, you have uh, the viaduct. Oobs has Jibba's Caves. Everybody can do the Floating City, which I don't know whether that has any flora or fauna. It's a floating city. Um, birds, I guess. Uh, I have the Harbour Town. Uh, I hesitate to say this. Chibi has wizard nonsense. Yes. Um, oh, fun! <laughs> Dark gets the abyss. Uh, Christy, you have the golden city. Ooh. Ragdoll, you, arguably Ragdoll has the the most straightforward one. You have the forest, a place arguably defined by flora. Um, Clamps can have limbo, and Lewis has the world at his fingertips. Uh, yeah, so I guess, yeah, hostile, hostile environmental things. I'm going to have to fix whatever bug made this happen. <laughs> but we'll That's deal with it. That's a prompt, though. It reminds me of one of the first ones you rendered, which was like a viney sort of thing. Or, um, was it the, uh, oh, what's it called? Puppy. What? Um, I have no memory of this. <laughs> You render I have no memory of this puppy? place. A blue puppy for the void. Mm. Are we talking about Mr. Tubbs? Oh, Poppy. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, Poppy. Okay. Sorry, I thought you said, I thought yeah, I thought you said, you said puppy. puppy. Oh, sorry. <laughs> like a dog. No, 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 no it's fine. That accent and um, <laughs> sniffles is not doing you justice. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Kira, who's going? Kira gets the forest. Vines! Hostile vines! <laughs> Kira, Kira is going to vent some frustration at uh, poisonous plants. Um, <laughs> seems perfectly reasonable. Um, actually, I read Kira. Well, everybody gets wherever. But um, yeah, I mean, I, I did draw in the original viaduct. There are vines crawling up one of the legs, so. Yee. I'm happy you changed something, Chip. Oh no, you, you didn't. <laughs> oh no, it's worse. <laughs> no, it's fine. Don't worry about <clears throat> Sorry in advance. No apologies. There we go, it's all in the Discord. Thank you, Rectal. I never, I never thank Ragdoll for always, um, what's the word? Being organized? I mean that. <laughs> um, my brain wants to say transliterating and that's absolutely not the word. Um, I'm not even going to try and decipher that word. Transcribing, possibly. We'll go with that for now. 
Yes, yeah, so thank Ragdoll for always transcribing the prompts into Discord yeah. during these streams. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, thank you. It uh, helps me a lot when I forget what I was supposed to do to do <laughs> half an hour after the stream. Yeah. Well, now that also, things half an hour before the stream. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, now we come back to this. <laughs> and now you don't have to. <laughs> I think we have. I don't, think, I don't want to go to the ban box. I think I don't deserve it. <laughs> You're already it, in so. the ban box. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> I want to know what the next level is. <laughs> At least they have great hair. It was, yeah. I mean, if there's I mean, one that's thing. The only plus side, I think. <laughs> yeah. If there's one thing having whatever this is done to you is, it's getting good hair. It's. Gotta look at the upsides. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I, I, I think, <laughs> I think Kimmy has already started making features for wizard nonsense. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah. We can I just, mean, I uh, said done, so you know, <laughs> I've done it. <laughs> Do you know? I, I did say it's a bit. That we have been missing this in a <laughs> chibi what? bin now. Um. <laughs> <laughs> this. You've been missing this. No, no. We, like when I originally gave this prompt, we were like, okay, what what sort of tone do we want, right? And I sort of said, well, so kind of whatever goes. You can take something like Zelda, right? Which at one point has like Kakarika Village, there's the happy music, and you're throwing chickens, and life's grand, everybody's having a good time, and dancing around the trees. And then there's a well in it. You go down the well, unspeakable horrors. We have finally found the well. <laughs> <laughs> it's bottomless. <laughs> <laughs> Chris said I'm already in the bin. <laughs> Make up your mind. No, you're in the band box. <laughs> oh, so now I go straight in the bin, okay. Yeah. Are you drawing the pit wreck doll? I'm trying to draw a tree stump so I can turn it into something. Turn it into a pit. <laughs> I mean, Ooh, yeah, you could carve out the inside and turn it into a bin. I <laughs> Sorry, I just came up with an idea. idea. I came up with an idea based on the tree stump, and then I realized that I don't want to tread on your toes with ideas. So, yeah, on whose go toes? Ahead. I've, I've got a couple of different things I'm possibly thinking of, but I need to start with a shape before I can draw anything else on top of it. Mm, fair enough. Actually, I guess mine wouldn't be flora and fauna; it would just be an enemy. Um, I've, I have actually forgotten my prompt. Harbour, right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Were you distracted by something, Chris? Poss possibly. Stop panning. <laughs> oh, it has hooves. <laughs> or, or at least one hoof. <laughs> and there's that lovely, lovely needles. Or, or flavour. No. <laughs> no <thing. laughs> Legend of Zelda is happy fun times. <laughs> Legend of Zelda is happy fun times, and then there are things like the Redeads, which are terrifying in Wind Waker and Twilight Princess. And Ocarina, to be fair. That scream that happens when they freeze you. That sounds like bad memories. <laughs> oh yeah, the boss in the well, yeah. I am Candy. now in the well, apparently. <laughs> <Candy friend. laughs> this is the origin story of the ring, right? Chibi yeah, was thrown actually. into the well. <laughs> that is one of the possible origin stories of the ring. Chibi's real name is Sadako. We've learned this now. <laughs> I learned this. I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> the legs on your statue is really cool, um, Chris. Uh, which one? <laughs> The second one, the, the small one. Ah. Those yes, I, I didn't did. I, see yet. Yeah, I wanted to try and work out. Like I say, I, I imagine the statue that has like a skirt going all the way down to the bottom. I was like, how would you make legs out of that? Like that. <laughs> yeah. It, it made, made its own legs. A, yeah. Take the rubble and walk on it. Eddie. Yeah. 
I just uh, I don't have brain for anything else than Stranger Things right now, so I drew it D. Oh right, yes. Itty I didn't know, that was, didn't know that was their name. <laughs> I, I have seen a clip of this. It's amazing. <laughs> this this is the only bit of Stranger Things I've seen since, uh, I think a trailer for series one. So. <laughs> Having grown up with a brother listening to Metallica 24-7 and therefore me listening to Metallica 24-7, <laughs> it was dope. <laughs> I love there was that thing of like, you know, a lot of people getting into Metallica because of apparently people wearing Metallica shirts in the show. And a bunch of old Metallica fans going, no, oh, you're not proper fans. And Metallica themselves issuing a statement saying, stop being a dick, people can enjoy our music. <laughs> Yes. People have to hear it for the first time somewhere. Yeah, it's not like, oh, you are you weren't alive in the 80s, fuck you. Yeah, you're not allowed to. <laughs> Shut up. It's music, enjoy it. Like, I'm extremely nostalgic about the 80s having not existed in the 80s, but it's fun. It's, it's uh, same with me in the 60s. Yeah. <laughs> so. What? You were not born in the 60s? When not, was alive. not physically, no. <laughs> Spiritually, yes. <laughs> this is very happy. I mean, I, I figure it's that when it comes to things that I enjoy, I always sort of do it with like the that one XKCD comic. Oh, yeah. And I know the one, even though there are several thousand of them. <laughs> well, there's there's only so many that are relevant when it comes to sharing experiences. Yeah. Come across somebody who hasn't seen something and you like you turn it into an exciting like, oh boy, <laughs> I get to show you this thing. I got really excited today because I haven't um, been able to watch Netflix since my uh, PlayStation died like a year ago or something. Um, because I've been sharing um, my brother's uh, password and it just didn't work on my mobile devices. It kept saying that the email didn't exist and shit like that. So I finally um, prioritized some fun for myself and started my own Netflix account mm. and began watching Umbrella Academy and Stranger Things. And then today... I found out that my brother and sister-in-law uh, are just starting Stranger Things Season 4 and we're just, yay, I have something to talk with my family about. Yay! yay. <laughs> so nice. That excitement of sharing awesomeness, creativity. It's just, who is this fella? What, uh, what's this, Chris? Oh, this is a pigeon. Um, it's a chunker. I was trying to think of like aggressive flora or fauna in a town or a city, um, and I just just pigeons. <laughs> Chris, I mean, <laughs> I mean, I I true. did I did have a couple of attack goals for the viaduct, so. Yeah, yeah. I, I like the idea that, like, pat particularly in a city in a, in games, you need to block off routes, right? You need to block uh -huh. off alleyways and streets and stuff like that. And there's only so many crates and only so many vehicles that have stopped in the middle of the road. I feel like just a flock of bastard pigeons not letting you through. <laughs> it's a novel they don't way. don't do anything, though. <laughs> like, I've never met a pigeon that was... Angie. Most of the time they're fine because we basically bred them to be pets um, and then yeah, kicked them out into the street. Yeah, them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So generally they're chill around us, but when when a when a pigeon gets annoyed, <laughs> it can get very I grumpy. See a pigeon getting attacked um, by an owl in um, a nesting box, which understandable. The owl was there with its children first, and then the pigeons were like we didn't share right um and the owl didn't like that and the pigeon was just like nah nah I, I'm, I'm chill here um i won't do anything to you because 
I know this is your home. I will be respectful. It was like that vibe, like, oh my goodness, they're just... <laughs> Pigeons are amazing creatures to me. I have been watching Pigeon TikTok, yes. <laughs> Now it's an animation. First it's like hunking down, being all chunky, and then it's going Wah! What's this? A little group. Um, I can do fantasy, I guess. Don't have to do... TV? How abhorrent can I do this? <laughs> I thought you were done, maybe. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> we haven't talked about your last atrocity being finished yet, and you're already at it again. <laughs> this is so cool, though. I love it. I think it's fine, right? I mean, the other one is just cursed. This one is scary and fun. Yeah. So far. So far. It's probably fine. I've yeah, you don't have to check it out. Don't pan. Don't get. I've, I've, don't put I, me down I, I, well. I have, I have panned and rotated. <laughs> <laughs> Let me rotate. I'll see yeah. it. I'll... Mi miss oh, requests. No. Miss requests. Can you move that away from Eddie? <laughs> <laughs> Rotating is worse. <laughs> The sound this was make. Oh. <laughs> and now it's got a happy face. Smile. <laughs> Jesus, I can't believe I almost thought I uh, was too sick to do this. <laughs> <laughs> you could have missed out on all of this. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's amazing. On um, whatever is up with me today. <laughs> It was it was a while ago that uh, Chibi found their their joy of drawing monsters. Yeah, it's we, we, been we a had while. a we had a gap, but it's back. <laughs> it's back, baby. No, all it all it took was a migraine. <laughs> all it took was a migraine. <laughs> yeah, all it took was something literally trying to push itself out of their eyeball. Eyebrow. Yeah, brown. You know, nothing really. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, you know, given given the choice between not having monsters and Chippy being fine or Chippy having a migraine and getting monsters, I would probably prefer the former. But... I mean, I am very delighted with these monsters. I'm sorry yeah, well... to say, Chip. While we are here, <laughs> it's gonna have oh, That is a was... very open mouth. <laughs> it's sure is. It's going right. <clears throat> oh my gosh, Ragdoll, is it intentional that the stripped away back looks like ears and a tuft of hair? <laughs> yeah. That's so cute. Kinda. Trying to give it a little face. See, I don't have that type of creative energy. That's awesome. I mean, it probably do. doesn't serve the purpose of ears, considering it's a tree stump. But then again, <laughs> you never know. I mean, probably... if tree stump through... is alive, does rules apply? It feels vibrations through the floor. It's fine. Yeah. Vibrations through its roots. Precisely. As its ear to the ground. Third pigeon is favorite pigeon. So we have the amphibian mafia, and now we also have the little bird mafia that's keeping you <laughs> from going down certain paths. Oh, do they work together? 
of the pigeons like actual messenger pigeons to them, but also menaces. No, I mean, they might can't... just be regular pigeons, but I'm just remembering from the Animaniacs. They had some characters there. Um, the Good Feathers, I think it was called. Oh, yeah. I about that. The, the Godfather. So they were little pigeon mafia. Good fellas. Yeah, no, I don't think you can tell what these pigeons are what to do. There might be pigeons that work with the mafia, but not these ones. Speaking of the mafia, though, I I <laughs> speaking what a trend, what, what a segue. What? Speaking of the Mafia, uh, <laughs> the Amphibian Mafia specifically, um, I put my uh, my three um, Amphibian goons in my random thing, October challenge thing. That looks fun. Um, and they got a fun style. Me. Yeah. So Is it fun, fun appropriate or fun inappropriate? Uh, not inappropriate necessarily. It, like it, the name fits perfectly, but the style takes a bit of tweaking to get them to fit. But in as much as I don't think the style has a single amphibian in it, but it happens. You know, I've got to draw Cheeb's uh, robot stray sonar in a style that doesn't have any robots. So, well, yeah, I mean, there's that, but like there are some <laughs> things where it's like. This doesn't feel like this. This style does not match the tone here, and that makes it funny. Um. Oh yeah, we're not. You know, they're not coming out of this seriously. <laughs> Very few characters are coming out of this seriously. <laughs> also, I still have one more slot available for characters. I'm sorry. I'm too um tired and the to remember stuff like not like uh, all not mixed languages either um but uh what is it you're doing oh um in october challenge I'm, I'm taking friends uh characters and drawing them in a randomly generated style right should specify for people yeah, who don't chris, know <laughs> but you chris has been asking for uh, styles and Chibi has been asking for style. Yes, Chibi's also doing a style challenge with um, Buddy. Definitely not a rap. He's a rap. Oh, not a rap. That meant I'm <laughs> stupid. Sorry. I did see the post. I just didn't really think. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> I think I have one from everybody at least. But if anyone wants to toss in a final one, do let me know. Why is the first name that comes to mind Gustav Klimt? Gustav Klimt? Hmm? Yeah. My art brain is um. Yeah, on... I I know it's an artist. I'm trying my desperate to remember what his art looks like. Ooh, wow, <laughs> that is distinctive. Yeah. Sorry for mentioning it. What does it look like again? I've seen it, but... Oh. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's what it looks like. Very patterned. A lot of artists like to emulate the style. Um, I don't know if it's just around here, but um, I've even even seen like hashtags uh, with Gustav Klimt, where people do their own art, but it's in their style. Um, I, I didn't know like my uh, not compromised. Um, what's it? Uh, 
small-minded brain was like, you can do that. <laughs> you can just like add the name of an artist in a hashtag and be like, I did this. Yeah. Well, that's what I plan on doing for 31 days this year. <laughs> well, I mean, if the artist has a distinctive style or you are on purpose, you have on purpose made something that is referencing their art in some way. So, like, I mean, it's 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 fairly common for, especially at schools, to go right. Here's some work from an old from an artist of a certain style that you are either wanting to work on or need to work on things with them, uh, and you sort of remake it. Uh, one of the hallways in the art building at campus has paintings on the walls, as in they were literally painted onto the walls um, of some art students, like senior, senior, they call it like a senior thesis, but it's not like what you and I think of as a thesis, Chris. Um, it, it's essentially like their final capstone oh, yes. project thing. And it's the part of their project was, I have recreated but I have repainted a version of this historic art piece. And I mean, no one's going to think it is the historic art piece because it's literally painted onto the wall of a campus that is much younger than the piece itself. But you look at it and you go, wow, that's pretty good. Yeah, that's Me. more like, um, like I know the do this in this style, but the specifically the, the Klimt ones I've been seeing is like um, if I didn't read the description I would have thought it was a Klimt um, and that's where I was like is, is that allowed? <laughs> I was surprised So long as it's not being sold as then there's no patent yeah. on style I don't believe As long as there is no confusion you know, there, there's um, uh, an artist, uh, I can't remember his name, but he he was a struggling artist for a while and then he realised, hey, I'm actually quite good at uh, not, not copying work, but painting in the style of somebody. And so they, they made forgeries and somebody Ooh. else like commissioned them to make these forgeries and then they were sold as though they were genuine lost paintings. And, and then he Ooh. went to prison so on and so forth <clears throat> and then they got out and now they make what they call genuine forgeries and essentially they just brand their name into the back of these things so it's like nobody can mistake this as being anything but mine <laughs> well, they're like, yeah. but then they did a bunch of tv programs about like these are the techniques that this put this uh, painter used to make this sort of thing and, and it was really cool that is interesting like i'm trying to remember his name <laughs> even though it was wrong it's still you can learn from it. I mean, to, to be fair, oh, yeah. You, well, you know, and say he was wrong. He, we... he was the person who went to the police about it. <laughs> he said, oh. "I don't like doing this anymore. I'm going to dob myself in. <laughs> this That's can't keep. This can't carry on." And then he, he wasn't in prison for long because obviously he helped bring the whole thing down. Hmm. Um, sorry, you were going to say Rebel? Yeah. Well, I mean, to a certain extent, like even if you aren't, but like there are people where their entire job is to sort of help it sort of not repaint but help maintain artworks and in oh, order yeah, to do that you need to have sort of an understanding of yeah, how it was made yeah. restoration that's so cool <laughs> always getting recommended sometimes videos you need on that to, like touch up things <laughs> things don't last forever like the knowledge of different um, pigments and binders and having to use like rapid glue to um, uh, fix the canvas back on a new frame and everything it's just fascinating oh yeah it's really cool but yeah going going around and selling the, like oh this was made by this artist when it was actually made by you that's that's a little that's less okay yeah <laughs> And then, of course, you get into the fun thing of the people trying to make art in the style of somebody else using this new AI technology. Oh, it's a nightmare. Mm. <laughs> oh. Yeah. It gives no. me so much dread. 
Yeah, same. Just like, no, don't, don't, don't make this a thing. <laughs> thing is, it's gonna be... I always feel like everyone's sort of... Not missing the point, so obviously I'm coming from this as an illustrator, not an artist. Um, but I feel like the the kind of end, well, maybe not the end goal, but certainly the thing this would be heading to is in the current. If you don't know, there's um, various people AI people are working on AI that can construct art based on prompts using by training it on existing artwork um, with particular tags, and then if you get enough of those, it can sort of develop its own. Um, which there's there's a whole moral question of training an AI based on your artwork and whether those people had choice in the matter, etc, etc. Um, and whether that counts as like a derivative work or what have you. And a lot of people are talking about is the AI actually being creative, etc, etc. What I'm more interested in is this is a technology, it's not going away, unless there are legis legislations put in place to stop training data being used without the consent of the person who made it. That's possible. Um, but as a tool, what it will probably be turned into is something much like most technologies that enter into some sort of craft. Um, it will just turn into a tool that will be used to either bypass a skill check, as it were, or dramatically decrease the time it takes to do something. So I can imagine, like, if you think of, like, a combination of, like, a texture brush and this AI, or, like, content-aware fill or something like that, where you would, like... Oh, I need I need this scene of an interior, and this interior there's like a big window and these lush curtains draping down, and that's going to be a big faff. I'm going to sketch the shape of the curtains and the folds. I'll then get my AI brush, set it to red velvet, rub the AI brush along that shape. It interprets the shape. It knows what red velvet looks like. It'll just put that texture in for you. It might not be perfect. You'll go in and touch it up afterwards, but that's going to save you bloody ages as a tool. Um, and that's probably what it's going to turn into, practically speaking. Um, well, eventually. <laughs> eventually, right yeah. Right now but... what it's becoming, practically <laughs> speaking. And so my concern is less on the arts side of things. My concern is more on the economic side of things. Because well, that's, what it's yeah, turning what... into right now is people, businesses bypassing paying artists because they mm. can get something cheap <laughs> from the then... AI. The, the the thing is, is I, I don't think, I, I, I still think like most applications of illustration, maybe not art, but most applications of illustration, they're still going to want somebody behind it using this AI to do whatever. But the thing is, like I say, it's going to become a tool and it's going to dramatically speed up the process. Every time a piece of technology enters a craft and it speeds up a process, what happens is there are now suddenly dramatically fewer work hours available, which means... A lot less work, a lot less jobs. It happens with the spinning Jenny, with the, you know, lots of, put lots of people who made thread out of business, the Jacquard loom, threw out a lot of weavers, all that sort of stuff. Te new technology comes along, it's gonna, it's gonna completely reshape how a job works and make it not profitable for large swathes of people. Um, so I'm, I'm certainly not going to stand here and go, oh, people are all missing the point. It's just going to make your job faster. No, if it makes your job faster, it means you've got less work. Um, so it's yeah, I'm aligning, right? It, it's well, it's looking at the whole cloud. <laughs> there will be a silver lining in the form that you will be able to do things faster, but the consequence of being able to do things faster is that everyone will be able to do things faster, which means that they will expect lower prices because it doesn't take as long, and that means you need to get more hours of, or, or doing more jobs to get the same amount of money and if you're doing more jobs that means fewer jobs for other people assuming you were the one of the people who could get the jobs otherwise you're the person who loses the job so yeah but see mm. what i'm talking about isn't even involving that because this is something that i've seen um mostly in graphics design thing but now i'm looking at this going ah oh, this is now just going to extend here is you you have people where it's like okay instead of paying someone with an expertise I'm going to buy a license. I'm going to go to someone where I can just say, hey, make your software do this for me, even though I have no idea how graphics design or illustration works, and you have no idea how graphics <laughs> design or illustration works. You yeah, just have it, a software it, that can just apply. Yeah, it's going to act as a skill bypass, in the same way that Photoshop did. 
you know, I, I have absolutely no idea how to source, prepare, mix, paint. I don't know how to set up a canvas. I don't know how to make the canvas, photograph the canvas so that it can be reproduced. I don't know any of that stuff because the technology came along that meant I didn't have to. Um, it just so happens that in this AI instance, it's bypassing massive swathes of the creative process. <laughs> so it's just a much bigger deal. Um, but it's certainly not a... You know, it's not a new thing. I'm saying, look at the past. This pattern has happened many times before, and we can learn from you know the consequences of that pattern in continuing to happen. Pattern that continuing to happen um, doesn't to mean it's going to be good. <laughs> we can just predict it. That's all. But yeah, like I, I am, you know, from the from the perspective of somebody who doesn't want to get into all this newfangled digital art, I am definitely cheating. Because I don't mix my colours, I don't prepare canvases, I don't, you know, I don't actually know the, the the practical things that are the origin of what I'm actually doing. You know, I've cheated because the computer does it for me. I mean, I, I get on another surface. I get it, and I hope um, that you're right and that it turns out that way. It's just that in... Honestly, with like the whole NFT business like that just <laughs> happened, I get why people are concerned, especially since artists already aren't getting paid enough. Yeah. <laughs> and this will only make it worse. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. This is it's gonna get worse. The AI is gonna at best reduce the time it takes to make art and as a consequence make it a lot cheaper. Um, there will always be, obviously, people who want art made by hand that doesn't use AI in the same way that there will always be people who want uh, clothes made by hand that are tailored to them, but most people buy factory-made <laughs> clothes yeah. because they are much cheaper. Then it's also like, then you have to find the uh, market for it, I guess, because I always excelled at painting portraits, um, <laughs> at drawing portraits, and nobody would pay like above what's 400 crowns it's like i don't know 40 dollars for it um then they were like whoa that's not that what i imagined that seems um, a steal <laughs> yeah um that's because funny. they could just put a picture in a program online and get a canvas sent to them with a print on it yep and hang that on the wall and it would be the same to them um and even people in my family have done that. Um, and um, people don't think about that that is um, taking a job out of someone's hand. Yeah, they just think, um, oh, this process can now be done cheaply and quickly. Great, fantastic. Yeah, so that means that I now can have my home decorated within a month instead of in several years when I can afford a painting a maid um, but then I got a commission um, before I got sick so it's like a week and a half ago by now um, for a pet portrait Ooh. Um, and that's a thing where people I think get more personal and that hmm. it's painted in hand and has "Quote unquote," a soul. Um, yeah, might the, the... be where people like me need to gravitate. Um, it's like, and and digitally, digital artists. Uh, if you watched Jazz's video on it, and also as you say, Chris, with the brush being able to just do a velvet curtain for you. Um, for people who don't have much of an inner eye, um, can composition things um only draw uh either people or environments vice versa um they can um use this to put up a composition and then paint that after as like a, a skeleton mm. to work after um that's a couple of things i can see but I hope there's going to be more good things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the advantage we have is specificity. 
generally speaking, when somebody wants to make a, a specific illustration, again, like oh, I'm thinking of this from the perspective of illustration rather than art. Art is a little more tricky. Um, when people want an illustration, generally speaking, they have a kind of specific idea in their head and the tools that we have at the moment, at least for the art, it's very difficult to make specific alterations from the perspective of what humans look at in a picture. Um, you know, the parameters that this AI is using to create this art are not human parameters. They are they're interesting parameters when you look into it, but if you change one of the parameters, the picture is going to change in a very not obvious way. Um, so we still have the advantage of specificity. If you want that dog painted, <laughs> you are mm. still best off having a human because a human can look at the dog and recognize the bits that make the dog recognizable. Um, the AI As doesn't really have some that. of these AIs where you give them a bunch of frogs and you end up with a Lovecraftian horror because yeah, exactly. the AI has no idea what <laughs> they can make, frog it, is. Yeah, they, they could theoretically create a picture of a dog or a frog or whatever after many attempts, but they probably, they all, at the moment, certainly, the technology is not there to make your dog. And that that is the advantage that we have at the moment, is specificity. At some point, it's probably just going to be um, calculated brush strokes on top of AI work or something. Making oh, it so, look like a human. So, so, per personal preference, not a big fan of the term AI because it's not, it gives a misconception of what's actually happening underneath the hood, as it were. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Myself and a few others prefer the term expert system because that's Ooh. what it is. It's a, it's a computer system that we have designed with some expertise in mind. So by and large, um, expert systems work best when paired with a human who knows what they're doing. And Ooh. they've seen both medicine and things like chess. So we, a, a chess system that was able to beat a grand, mas grand chess master has been around for a while. So we, we've already done it. But it turns out even that expert system can be beaten by someone who's moderately good at chess paired with a less sophisticated expert system. Ooh, so that's interesting. The, the ideal, <laughs> like anyone who knows what they're talking about will tell you that the AI by itself is good but the more powerful tool will be the ai being used by someone who knows what they're doing at least to a certain extent yeah, yeah so this this but is this is this is what i mean about it, it being incorporated into a tool for humans to use like a brush or something like that is it, it with a much more sort of directed because at the moment the technology is you type in a prompt a picture appears and it's not there's not really that element of human manipulation that's going to be required to turn it into something that is in, in artistic or illustrative terms, sort of aesthetically appealing or whatever. Um, or or what, what was required of the original brief, you know. I mean, it, 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 I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's, I guess it's one of those things where it's like, you know, the human knows how to play chess, generally speaking, and the computer knows how to search through lots and lots and lots of possibilities and generally knows what the winning condition is for chess. If you combine those two things together, all of a sudden you've got something that can compute fantastically and knows how to play. It's, I guess it's the similar thing with art. The AI knows how to put pixels in order that follow patterns that it has observed in existing artwork. And a human knows what is aesthetically pleasing. <laughs> combine the two, you can get something that actually approaches things that are, you know, desirable and fast to make. And, you know, that, as I say, that's going to have consequences for the profession in and of itself. But gen it, f it's for, for more specific tasks, a human will still be required to operate the thing. And not, and not just type in a prompt. There, there would have to be actual manual work, but it would just be significantly faster than doing it all by hand. Uh, like, um, some people have... Um more need for it than others but like having a uh, understanding in yourself of like this is how reality works this is how 
things are going to be and I can feel safe in that if that uh, makes sense. Um, I like right now the thought of AI being a buddy. Yeah, I, I mean, there are... There is the whole side of things of AI safety and stuff like that. If you're talking about like general intelligence, um, which is the thing that Ragdoll would think of as AI, and that I'm not talking, I'm talking about, you know, e expert systems or whatever. Yeah, um, that's what I mean. <laughs> yeah, and, th and there's definitely you know a lot of people who are. There's a guy. Ah, his name is. I'm bad with names today. Um, a guy I follow on YouTube who does a lot of videos about AI safety. Um. Because that is a thing that is important. If you're going to create something that can generally solve problems, if it's if it has smarter pro if it has faster processing power than you and can solve problems that you can, you need to make sure that it what it wants to do is the same as what you want to do. Um, and there have been plenty of examples of AI that don't do what you tell it to do, but they do, just not what you meant. Mm. And so there was like <laughs> there was that wonderful example of like uh, people who made a Tetris AI to play Tetris, and the idea was when you you know you want to avoid losing, you want to avoid losing, you want to try and you know get a higher score as possible. And when you lose, your score resets to zero. So that's that it trained it. When you lose, your score goes to zero. That's you got to avoid that, right? That's bad. And it, it was learning from that. And so what it what it eventually learned how to do is it played the game relatively well. And just before it was going to lose, it paused the game and then just stopped. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, yeah, <laughs> OK, yeah. you technically did what we I'm want. Human, though. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're not losing. That's not what we meant. But that's like a toy example. Right. And then there are, you, you would get more serious examples as you start getting into sort of real world applications. But there are definitely yeah, you... people working on this. This is a very hot area of research yeah you so. and, and some of the more serious examples you've got some things where um hey we're training this thing to recognize faces but because these thing this thing has been the training has been set up by a human person and human people have various biases that we don't think about uh this training system will not recognize any of our black or asian co-workers faces it just doesn't know what their faces look like it can't identify it as a face yeah, yeah that's I a fun one i don't remember what it was maybe it was a joe scott video or something but where like not all of them but a ton of the pictures used in uh some kind of program where it was just like those people all they're the same yeah yeah <laughs> It's like it's just very limited. Again, like a, an AI or or an expert system, whatever you want to call it, a, a neural network of some description, is usually trained on a practice source. It has it has training data, and if your training data has limitations or biases, then it the neural network's understanding of whatever you're trying to do will inherit those limitations or biases, whether you realize they're there or not. Mm. Um, so yeah, in that case, and, they probably just didn't have a good enough mix of people. And sometimes, uh, it will go the other way around. You will say, oh, we're going to use pictures in very different situations. And, uh, then it will only notice the, ec the other thing. So there was a, um, oh, I don't remember exactly who was doing it. I want to say it was an old military project that went belly up so they just kind of went yeah whatever anyone can know about this they were trying to train the system to recognize tanks but you need to be able to recognize the tank when it's behind an obstruction so they went right okay here's things with like a tree in front of it or rocks in front of it or partially covered by a building and it's like right okay and then the thing kept tagging trees and rocks and parts of buildings as the thing of interest. And it's like, no, 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 no. Yeah, that's not good. It is known as an alignment problem. I recommend Robert. Uh, Robert Miles was the person I was talking about. I've, I've linked the channel in the thing. I, I remember, forgot that the last 
or the second to last picture of picture video that they posted was a talk about introducing AI safety. So that's that's probably a good place to start. Yeah. Um, it's interesting. It does a lot of sort of interesting scenarios and sort of thought experiments and gives examples of real world applications as to how AI have not done what we thought they would do and how we can fix that in future while they're still toy examples, etc. But yeah, the, the idea is to make AI augmentations of ourselves and things that just want to do what we want to do. That's that's the alignment problem. And that is a an ongoing piece of research. So yeah, that is that is definitely a focus. <laughs> I didn't know we wanted Terminator. I thought we were trying to like steer away from that. No, no, no. We want we, we want AI to do what we want to do. Oh. <laughs> yeah, so whenever it comes to a lot of tech stuff, especially computer stuff, the problem on you guys' end is that a lot of the people that you're hearing talk about tech stuff are not the people who actually understand the tech stuff. Hmm. It's the people trying to make money off of the tech stuff. <laughs> yes. Ugh. But the thing they're trying to make money off of is... Uh, not necessarily the tech stuff, it's it's usually your data. That way, if they have your data, they can sell you more stuff. Yeah. So that's why, like, any anyone I know who is in technology does not have much in the way of smart devices around their home because they understand enough about the tech and the companies selling them the tech to go, oh yeah, smart devices are a good idea. But don't trust this company in particular. Yeah. <laughs> Just ignore all ads. There, there is no unbiased smart <laughs> device, generally speaking. Because at some yeah, point like, it was made by like somebody. In, and they... in an ideal world, having a refrigerator that can like keep track of what items you've had in their expiration date is a pretty nifty thing, especially if you're someone who has got like memory issues or yeah. can't go to the store all of the time so you can sit there and not have to worry about eating something that's gone bad because the refrigerator can remind you hey don't eat the lettuce it's past its expiration date so that allows people like the elderly to live by themselves for longer because we no longer need a human person to double check to make sure that they're not eating uh, lettuce that has mold growing on it, because the refrigerator can remind them. But a lot of the people selling such devices uh, are not interested so much in your grandma being able to live a well and full life independently. Uh, they're interested in s selling a refrigerator, and they're not also necessarily interested in making sure that the refrigerator will not have security issues. Yeah, that's so annoying to me personally. Like my um, uh, scooter, my scoot scoot um, that I bought. I'm like, I knew it from the start because I'm like, I know how it works. But it's some surprisingly not handicap friendly. <laughs> um, and that's just, it's so obvious that this was made fast and without thought just to ship it out make money maybe i have zoomed out and the fact that you gave the eye, eye and mouth is backwards luxurious hair and muscles <laughs> yeah. is mildly <laughs> upsetting they're handsome it's what <laughs> Yeah. Like, like the outside framework is very much handsome man, and then the face. <laughs> you mean this is what, to say this is that what, the face isn't handsome? This is what you get when you type handsome man into the AI. <laughs> <laughs> Please admit it to an AI. To an AI. A miss is asking if you've strange. seen Stranger Things. No, I have not, no. Mm, you may, you may have replicated something. <laughs> Miss was very concerned about the fact that you put this next to the picture of a character from Stranger Things, so I'm I'm imagining you've replicated something. No. <laughs> <laughs> I I personally love this Slitheen homunculus. Slitheen. <laughs> what? Slitheen homunculus. 
Define the word Slitheen. Chief, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean, Dark? This is all good. <laughs> What's wrong? Monster version Steve Harrington. Well, I have to look that up. God, it's Steve Harrington as a monster. You're monster so versions. right. That's ridiculous. How didn't I see that? Who's Steve? It's Steve Harrington. Steve Harrington. That's why they're so handsome. This man has a quiff. I have been seeing pictures of him on Tumblr, so maybe I internalized him. <laughs> Their hair <laughs> and, is and this is what your subconscious it... thinks of him. <laughs> yeah, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because... Uh... Look at me for a minute. When did that man get a body? Which... Which one? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, narrow it down, please. <laughs> <laughs> that looks... The character Steve Harrington was supposed to die off fairly quickly, but they kept liking the the actor's um, portrayal of the character too much, so they evolved him evolved him instead. And I'm personally of the belief that the hair was fifty percent of that. <laughs> okay, mean that? so <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Dark is talking about the the. Uh... The, the man with hooves? Yes. <laughs> oh, that the one. The man okay. with hooves. <laughs> not, not the um, hunk mimic. <laughs> <laughs> no, Hulk not the hunk is. mimic. <laughs> I do, it, the, the hoof one feels like a yokai, you know what I mean? <laughs> oh, yeah. It's got that vibe. <laughs> it does. It's like, it's not scary, it's not... I'm sorry, cool, it's not like, it's just disturbing. He's like, eh, I have my own agenda. Yeah. It's like, you don't know it's what it wants. Weird, a, a weird little gremlin. As the chest <laughs> face describes most yokai, yeah. actually. Ooh. It's just a weird gremlin. Miss learned a thing yesterday, and she's very excited about it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, is the it chest about... face has a smile. <laughs> is it about chest gremlins? <laughs> I have been meaning to ask, is it a picture on a shirt, or is it a face merging out of this um, yokai? Yeah, but I'm imagining it's a face. I don't think that's a t-shirt. <laughs> no, that's a face. <laughs> that is, is part of the face. body. <laughs> that's worse. <laughs> also, this stump look. This stump looks like it's had enough. He's <laughs> <laughs> looking over at these Jesus. monsters and going. <sighs> Come on, guys. Yeah, I I was trying to draw in like a mouth type thing with moss, and it's like this is now just looking like a mustache. So we, oh, we yeah. have grandpa stump. <gasps> grandpa stump. <laughs> with, a, with a mustache. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there, there it is. Jokes. <laughs> That is now this character, Mustache. Mustache. <laughs> Another great character. Yeah, I don't know if I've drawn any fear characters today. I've just been going on on no intention. I, I don't know if we want any of these to be fear characters. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, th this is like the game that is is made like via inexplicably gains massive popularity and they start making spin-off games made by other companies just to keep up with the hype <laughs> the, these were made by the other company trying to make a via game <laughs> yeah. this type one is 100 avoid character okay type character. night crawler's cryptid fan art give it a go it was this about the man with the really long pants these are just living pants. Oh, that's what they are. They're, I, I'm looking at a picture and they're very cute there. <laughs> I, I, I followed a, a thing, a webcomic, cryptid something. Um, and yeah, they're, they're in that. And 
ninety percent of these pictures are very, very cute. <laughs> e. Oh my goodness. That's just, pet, pet. that's just long pants. Yeah, long pants. And then Nightcrawler, okay. yeah. Hang on, let me let me get the uh, the comic. Like look if... at that, that's just adorable. Well yeah, the webcomic has ended, unfortunately. They have a physical book out there. Um Remember when I used to do physical books? <laughs> I mean, to a certain extent, it's sort of nice when a webcomic reaches an end, though I'm also remembering a lot of webcomics of the early, mid-2000s <laughs> that just sort of stopped. Yeah, I, I mean, October and co. planned to have 100 comics. <laughs> I didn't get that far. <laughs> 78, though, wasn't bad. I had an ending as well. I mean, um, something I, happened while I think the October and Cold worst Cold. one I ran into is this just Bongo Cat? <laughs> it's Bongo Cat with legs. <laughs> yes, they get up yeah, stuff like this. Bongo arms. <laughs> tappy, tappy. Oh. <laughs> you don't have copies of them? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's very funny. I love the deer just <laughs> Pikachu face. That booty be popping. Not something people probably expected people to say about a cryptid, but that's the internet for you. <laughs> <laughs> um, Mothman? Someone's probably said that about every cryptid. <laughs> I mean, we've talked yeah. about that before. <laughs> Lots of people have said that about a cryptid because Mothman exists. Moth oh yeah, I forgot about Mothman. <laughs> yeah. So so thick they carved it into well, not carved, <laughs> yes. they formed it into metal. Hewn it out of metal <laughs> as a testament to the booty. Um. <laughs> What a nice note to end on. What a From lovely end. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and if that's not a good ending to a via stream, I don't know what is. Uh, <laughs> I don't know either. <laughs> Thank you very I much. I have blacked out for half this stream. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair. Um, yeah. oh, but I you. have drawn some things I actually want to render, kind of. So um, I don't know what that is. Yes. <laughs> Uh, yay, and also, hmm. <laughs> ah. Learned. It, it's it's going to be the melted cat, right? <laughs> yeah, it's going to be the cat. Uh, sure. We can say that. Please. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, Christy asked for a sticker of that, so maybe I'll actually consider it. <gasps> Chip sticks. I don't know how to make stickers, but we'll make it happen. I miss doing stickers. I want to do stickers again. <laughs> Everybody do stickers! Foreshadowing. Stickers are good. Um. <laughs> I'll make a mood, mood sticker sheet and it's... <laughs> a bunch of cats and a bunch of horrors and I think that sums up what I do pretty well. <laughs> Maybe one or two cat horrors, you never know your luck. <laughs> That's quite the brand. Yeah. Or and cat. Uh, well, that's Jinji Ito's brand, isn't it? <laughs> I'm yeah. not gonna steal Jinji Ito's brand. <laughs> Chibi's gonna steal Jinji Ito's brand. Uh, yeah. Well, that's uh, fun stream. Fun, horrifying stream. Um, yep. <laughs> thanks, everybody. This was fun. It was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. fun times. I'm um, very sweaty. <laughs> spe speaking of horrors and sweat. Uh, Neo on Tuesday. Um, I have played quite a lot off stream. Turns out the game's weird. We'll get to that. <laughs> oh, anyway, here. things don't make sense. The level of the level is not the level. There's not level with the level of the character. 
So it's, the it's level un- isn't the recommended level. No, no, it's an unlevel level level. Um, so I hope that makes sense. But yeah, we'll we'll get to that. <laughs> no, it does not. I know. It's like, what's the level then? I've looked, tried to look it up, and I was like, what what is the level for in the level? And they say, nobody knows. <laughs> Great. Anyway, um, I'm just going to be banging my head against that boss for however long. Um, but yeah, that's on that's on Tuesday, Wednesday. Probably do a bit more music because I enjoyed it last time. Um, and then Saturday we will hopefully be doing obelisk things with friends, all being well. Fr- fr- frombelisk, frembelisk, <laughs> frembelisk, frembelisk. And now you have pig pope. We have pigs, in pope hats. That's the thing that happened. Okay. Um, <laughs> don't worry about it. We unlocked a pig. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's a good time. And then Sunday, more of here and all monsters. Um, we need more things for the well. <laughs> That's a good sentence. I mean, if we're not careful, we're going to need multiple wells. We, we, we're, it's a big well. Um, every, every one of the supports for the viaduct is a well. Oh, no. <laughs> you break but, one of the supports and any of these come out. Yeah. There's a couple of cracks in the, the supports in the abyss. It's uh there's, there's some stuff down there. It's how um, Grundle falls. Anywho, it's, it's Strim. Strim end. Bye! Bye. Bye bye.